If you're wondering whether the law of attraction is real, whether we create our own reality, and the degree to which destiny interferes with that, you're in the right place. In this video, I've partnered up with award-winning life coach, manifestation expert, and number one best-selling author of Spiritual Queen and Positively Wealthy, Emma Mumford, to answer all of these questions. This is the second of a two-part video series I did with Emma, the first one being about the difference between twin flames and soulmates. That video is available to watch on Emma's channel, and you can watch it by clicking the link in the description below. I'm George Lizos, and I empower lightworkers with tools and guidance to find, follow, and fulfill their life purpose. If you're ready to follow yours, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I'm also excited to announce that my new book, Lightworkers Gotta Work, is now available to order globally on Amazon. In the book, you'll get to find your life purpose and learn practical processes, rituals, and meditations to follow and fulfill it, with the aim of creating big positive change in the world. I'll pop the link for it in the description below so you can check it out. And without further ado, let's jump into the conversation. Hi George, thank you so much for having me on your YouTube channel. I am so excited to be here today with you um, and our conversation over on my channel for Soulmates vs Twin Flames was so, so exciting. So if you haven't watched that video, head on over, watch that one because this video will make a lot of more sense too. So Free Will and Destiny makes, oh my God, so many great conversations. You and I have had so many conversations about this, George, over the last few months and even years. So. Do you truly believe we are the author of our own life? What's your take on that? Okay, so the answer is yes and no. Now, here's what I mean. I believe that we're 100% the authors of our own life, but when I say we, I don't just mean our physical body, our ego, our personality. I mean the whole of us, the soul version of us, and therefore our inner being, our higher self, as well as our ego and our personality in this lifetime. Now, what do I mean in practical terms? I believe that before we come into this world, we come with soul contracts already decided and already in place soul contracts about certain events, certain opportunities, certain people that we choose to meet in this lifetime so that we can learn lessons with one another and expand and grow on our ascension journey. So let me back up a little bit and this is connected with what we talked about in uh, the video about twin flames and soulmates in your channel. So I believe that every single person has a soul that is on a journey of ascension and we incarnate with a group of people that and those soul groups tend to be a little bit sticky meaning they are constant lifetimes after lifetime of course new people come in sometimes people come out but essentially they are quite sticky and then we incarnate with those people lifetime after lifetime so we can learn different lessons with each other we have different dynamics we play different roles in each other's lives so we can grow both as a group like soul-wise and ascension-wise and collectively, and we can also grow when it comes to our own personal soul journey of ascension. And therefore, as a result, before we incarnate, we come into this lifetime with expectations. We're like, okay, I'm gonna manifest this opportunity, I'm gonna manifest this person, I'm gonna manifest this event, so that I can grow on this specific journey, so that I can learn this specific lesson. At the same time, there's a great deal of free will that comes with it, because we don't come into this world, we don't incarnate with every single second of our lives, like pre-decided, predetermined, there is this element of surprise and spontaneity and we're choosing and we're manifesting and we're creating, but I do believe there is a framework already in place. Now, here's a catch here. A framework may be in place, but it's not destined to happen. This framework of opportunities and events is optional because free will trumps that. Let's say, for example, I have this book, Lightworkers Gotta Work. Was it destined for me to write this book? Not really. It was destined for me to have the idea to write this book. Before I incarnated, probably I made the decision, okay, I'm at this point in our life, at this age specifically, I'm gonna have this idea to write this book about this specific purpose. So the idea came in and then I had the free will to choose. Am I gonna take this idea and fulfill it or am I gonna ignore it and move forward? So essentially, we are the authors of our own life. 
but it's not just me from my limited human perspective right now, it's my connectedness to source, it's my soul in collaboration with my personality, with my ego in this lifetime, collaborating both from a, a soul perspective and a human perspective to decide how this life will take place. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I 100% agree with that. Um, because, you know, obviously, the first thing I came across on my journey was law of attraction and manifesting. And I think when people find that, they're like, Oh, my God, I can create everything in my life, whoop, whoop. And then, as I went down with like some of the bigger things, especially relationships, um, you know, it had its set time, it had divine timing, it had so many different factors. And even with things like book deals or other kind of like business related things that I've done, you know, things haven't always worked out exactly how I've wanted or you know whatever um, but further down the line when you can kind of look back and connect the dots I'm like but actually that was for my highest good like I am so pleased it worked out this way so I agree with you fully I think previously I was like we're 100% the author of our life 100% and now I'm definitely like actually I see destiny at play I see fate at play I see free will choice at play as well so I think like what you said makes total sense to me and I 100% resonate with it so let's talk more about manifestation then because a lot of people will be like well if manifestation is real then surely we can create everything in our life so is manifestation real if destiny is always at play Yes, so manifestation and the law of attraction are 100% real. However, there are other laws in the universe that the law of attraction has to collaborate with, essentially. So, for example, I may want to fly right now, and by the law of attraction I should be able to do this. However, this conflicts with the law of gravity. So, because there are other laws in place, including a law about soul contracts that we've made before we incarnated, our law of attraction can, can do so much. So we can avoid a soul contract if we choose to and therefore essentially use our free will, all the law of attraction to just ignore it or we can work with it. I can see the conflict here because from one perspective, okay, the law of attraction says you can do everything like, and anything you want, but at the same time you have those specific soul contracts that are there. but are we manifesting and are we working with the law of attraction from our ego or are we working with the law of attraction from our soul perspective? Because when we are manifesting from a soul perspective and therefore when we take the time to connect with our soul, to do our spiritual practice, to come into our connectedness with our higher self first, then whatever desires to use the law of attraction to manifest anything that come forth from that state are aligned with our soul contracts. So essentially, when we're aligned to our inner being, we cannot have desires that are not aligned with our soul contracts, the soul contracts we made before we incarnated. But if on the other hand, we try to manifest from our disconnected place of being, and therefore we don't have a spiritual practice, we manifest from a place of like, like the, the darker side of the ego, like just wanting things for vanity or to prove something to other people or to just uh, like out of greediness, like with no purpose, with no soul coming through that, then in many occasions we may be trying to manifest outside of our whole perspective, outside of our whole self, and that's when we're gonna conflict a little bit with all the soul contracts that are in place. So I think this is a beautiful rule of thumb to have in mind. That's why in my book, Lightworkers Gotta Work, I talk a lot about nurturing our light first and then working our light. Because when we nurture our light and therefore when we come into our connectedness with our inner being, whatever desires come forth that we want to manifest are already in aligned with our higher perspectives, desires, with all the contracts we've set up and therefore we know we're in the right path and then manifestation is so much more easier because it doesn't come from a place of ego, it comes from a place of connectedness with our life purpose, with the world around us, with all the soul contracts we have in place and therefore it's all so much easier. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think it is all about that aligned manifesting, isn't it? Where you're coming from that space of when you're in alignment, when you're nurturing yourself, when you're having having good self-care, self-love, daily practice, etc., good spiritual hygiene, etc., which I know you speak about, 
you are coming from you know a place of love you are coming from a place of manifesting in the most you know in the right way and the universe again you're co-creating it's not just you here who is saying i want this i want this you're co-creating with the universe so the universe has that input as well from what you said in terms of the soul contracts how it plays out destiny etc so I do see it as that co-creation process of yes, you are the author, but also your soul is the author as well. And it's bringing all those things together out of free will, which is then saying, okay, how does that play out in the physical? How is that playing out for you in your life? So my next question is one of the sayings I love most, but I'm like, is George about to literally ruin the saying for me? <laughs> is you're always exactly where you're meant to be. And I find that, you know, I've always felt that calming, energy with that saying and it's always helped me to bring me back into the present moment and I think looking back over my life and looking over my manifestation journey I can definitely agree that I've always been where I was meant to be at that time you know I don't believe there are mistakes so do you believe that saying is true when we're talking about free will and destiny? I'm not gonna ruin it for you I also believe it is 100% true because essentially our power is always in the present moment there cannot essentially the premise of this um, of the idea that we cannot be in the right place this premise is false like uh, like it, it cannot be it, because all we can do all we can be at is the present moment because the only way for another moment to ruin whatever it is we're experiencing right now is for us to allow our past to intrude into our present or to allow our fear for the for the future intrude into our present in every single moment in this present moment we have choices we have a choice to think a specific thought we have a choice to think uh, to, to, to feel a specific emotion to take a specific action and those thoughts emotions and actions are directing us on the way towards our life purpose and when we take the time to connect to our source first through our spiritual practice and come into this place and this space of alignment then our present moments as they unfold are always in aligned in alignment with that higher perspective and therefore we're taking action steps and we're making choices and thinking thoughts and choosing emotions that are in alignment with that and therefore ensuring that we are in the perfect moment the only place that uh, the only time where we may not be in the in the right moment although still we are is when we're disconnected from source and therefore when we're taking action outside of our highest good but even in those moments in those contrasting moments in those negative moments in our lives when we're acting outside of what our soul wants us to to do then we're still in the perfect moment because we're creating new desires whenever there is contrast there is also a desire whenever we lack something we have a desire for something else so we're just we just keep adding new desires into our soul journey that we can fulfill when we come back into alignment with our inner being later on so there cannot be a wrong moment we're always in the perfect moment at the right time because this is where the power is amen to that loved every single word and i'm glad you didn't ruin it for me because i love that saying and I, I you know i fully agree with it as well so let's talk about the history of destiny then so everybody's like destiny whoa like you know things are destined since the beginning of time and our souls make all this destiny and karmic choices etc so what is the history of destiny because i know you have a really unique perspective of this so because I'm a, I'm a Greek pagan priest, I work with the Greek gods and goddesses. I study a lot uh, about the ancient Greek theological perspective. So the ancient Greeks talked about destiny in the sense that there are three goddesses, the known as the fates, the three fates that determine, quote unquote, determine our destiny. And these are Lachesis, Atrapos, and sorry, Lachesis, Glotho, and Atrapos. Now, let me just explain each one of them. Essentially, Lachesis is the goddess, one of the three fates, that determines the main events and opportunities in our lives. They're not meant to happen. She just schedules them, essentially, into our lifetime, into this timeline, so that when the opportunity comes, we have the free will to either go for it or not. So nothing is destined like 100% to happen. The opportunity is destined, but then it's up to us to take it or not. So that's what, this is what Lachesis does. And then we have Glotho. 
Now, Glotho just weaves these experiences into creation. She has a more passive role. We don't have a lot of interaction with her. She just weaves all those experiences, these opportunities into our lives. And then we have Atrabos. Atrabos essentially decides our moment of death, which brings us to a fascinating topic. Are we destined to die at a specific time? Is death predetermined? Now, on the way leading up to this interview, to this discussion, Emma, I was thinking about this because to be 100% honest with you, I haven't made up my mind yet as to whether death is predetermined or not. But this morning, here's where I'm at. <laughs> and this is just today. It may change tomorrow. But the way I see it, we choose our death from a soul perspective. Let's say, for example, because it's like it, we manifest it essentially. If we consistently vibrate at a low vibrational frequency that either asks for more, asks for something that's not part of this world anymore and can only be fulfilled outside of this world, or if we just push against this stream of well-being that's constantly flowing with us and we keep ourselves disconnected from who we really are chronically, then there comes a point when the path of least resistance is for us to exit this planet and move on so we can find happiness and peace elsewhere. So from this perspective, there may be like a set time frame as to, okay, this is the time of uh, the time in this person's life that we're winding down a little bit that lifetime and it's time for this person to proceed into another lifetime, another soul contract, but I don't feel it's 100% predetermined specifically. This is the date and time that this person is going to die. I think there is a general idea that fits into the whatever the, the, whatever choices and opportunities and experiences of free will in collaboration with the law of attraction, in collaboration with our soul's contracts, co-create together. So there is partly our soul just fitting in information and uh, communicating, it's time for you to move on, you have more soul contracts to fulfill, and partly our physicality saying, you know what, I'm enjoying this lifetime, let me stay a little bit longer, or I've, I've given whatever I've given to this uh, lifetime, let me just move on. So I think it's a little bit of both. What do you think about it? Yeah, I agree with you, to be honest, like from just things I've read or looked into, like obviously I feel like we have opportunities, like you say, it's if you're leaning more towards that, those opportunities, those windows of exit are there for sure. But yeah, like I feel it is prede predestined, but who knows, like it fascinates me all of this. So my next question then, George, is does free will mean we can avoid divine assignments or life lessons? So if we were just like, no, I don't want to do that, can we do that? Or is it like it would come back around and we would still have to do it? Yes, free will trumps destiny and the law of attraction, essentially. Well, not really the law of attraction, because if a free will has to do, I mean, uh, the law of attraction is informed by our free will as well as our soul contracts. But essentially, we have a purpose to fulfill in this lifetime and we have these different opportunities that are quote unquote destined to come into our lives. We have the free will to ignore life purpose, to ignore those opportunities and to just remain asleep and just not follow our life purpose, which means we're just gonna get a repeat lifetime. We're gonna come back again and again and again and again until we decide to show up, do the inner work, see your life purpose and take action towards it. So essentially that's why I'm so passionate about teaching people to find their life purpose because we don't wanna repeat lifetime, right? <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. So I think like you say, it's. I agree with that of choosing, you know, what's for your highest good, but I think you naturally feel more drawn to, you know, what's for your highest good. And, you know, even though these lessons may be tough, it's like, actually, I feel more gravitated towards that of that feels the right choice or that feels the wrong choice. So George, then my final question is for anybody watching who, you know, is into the law of attraction, they're manifesting, they're like, what? Like I thought I was 100% the author of my life. What are your top tips for embodying more of a relaxed approach with that destiny and free will? Well, essentially, before you try to manifest anything, before you try to consciously use the law of attraction to create anything into your life, make sure you're feeling good first. Make sure you do the inner work. Make sure you have a spiritual practice that allows you to connect with your soul, to connect with your inner being, 
It allows you to allow energy to flow through your body and therefore you step into the identity of your eternal self that knows your soul contracts, that knows the whole picture essentially. And then from that place, ask yourself, what is it truly that I want to manifest? This is how we have the, uh, the, more, the most easy approach when it comes to manifestation, because otherwise we just get into neurosis, we just force it, we try to make it happen, it doesn't work, we feel frustrated. So just relax into it, make sure you're feeling good, and then from that place of feeling good, allow the desires that your soul wants you to manifest to come into your presence and come into your life because from that perspective we're manifesting from a soul perspective and not from an ego perspective and that's how light workers work that's why road light workers gotta work because we're not just working for the sake of working manifesting for the sake of manifesting we're manifesting our light we're manifesting our life purpose with the aim of creating big positive change in the world I love that George and I fully agree with you there of you know it's all about that alignment isn't it so I think my top tips would be to relax into it like you said but I think as well like address your worst case scenario of what is triggering that control what makes you want to have control over your desires or outcomes etc so I would definitely look at the control aspect and moving into that space of alignment but through releasing the need to control but also acceptance of exactly all of what we've said today of this or something better for the highest good of all the universe makes no mistakes so trust that wherever you're being led is good is positive as long as you're making those positive heart-centered decisions as well for yourself you can't go wrong you're always where you're meant to be so relax into it and also address your worst case scenario of what is you know making you control or fear you know it not happening etc so that's what i would say but thank you so much George for having me it's been awesome to do this two-part series with you and bring two unique but amazing perspectives together on law of attraction and destiny but also twin flames and soulmates as well thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for watching Lightworker please let us know in the description below what do you think about this matter is law of attraction real is is destiny interfering with it where do you stand of this on this would love to know and also be sure to go check our first video in the series in emma's channel all about the difference between twin flames soulmates karmic soulmates so interesting and of course come into your spiritual toolkit facebook group and join the conversation there be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this